you may just be a victim of gaslighting at that moment. They may be the covert narcissist that's trying to throw that at you to deflect, to confuse you. If they accuse you of that, and now you turn around and accuse them back, you look like an idiot, which would starting to happen. Narcissists accusing narcissists back and forth. I don't give a f My friendly friends, welcome back to another segment of the Psychopath Exposure Show. My name is Kira, and uh, you know what's lately, if you guys haven't already noticed, and when I say lately, I mean over the past few years, how trendy the term narcissist has become. Remember when it actually meant something? It is so trendy now, and Everybody that's been cheated on now just calls their ex a narcissist. And um, that's not always true. In fact, it's usually not true because if that were the case, then the, the narcissist personality disorder, the percentage of its effect on people would be much higher than it actually is. Now, do I believe that number is growing? Absolutely. I believe that the times we're living with a cell phone and social media is breeding uh, personality disorders, the, the patterns of behavior that fall under the cluster B personality disorder spectrum. Um, people are being taught, kids are being taught through TikTok, through Instagram, through videos like that, um, how to behave, how to date, how to ghost people, how not to text back, how to gaslight, like even terms like gaslighting are, are also so trendy. They've always been around, but they have become so trendy now that when you, everyone's just throwing them around and they start to lose their impact, they, they're getting watered down, and now uh, you know, you'll tell someone, oh, I'm dating a, I was dating a narcissist, my ex was a narcissist, and people start to roll their eyes. And that's, that, that, that sucks, because you, when you've been through narcissistic abuse, you need that validation. You, know, you need the validation. I, I remember when I went through it, I wasn't getting it. Nobody, nobody understood what I was going through, and I was losing my mind. And when I met my mentor, and answered all my questions, and you know, it's like he knew what I went through. He would complete my sentences as I was trying to explain my situation and my story. I was like, "This guy gets it. What is this?" And he told me, "This is what it is. This, is, this has a name. Read this book. Study this. Study that. Listen to this person." You know, and I started doing that. I was like, "Whoa." This is exactly to the T. This is psychopathy. I was dating a psychopath. No wonder. This is beyond narcissists. This is a fucking psychopath. Oh, so not all psychopaths are serial killers like Dexter. They're actually, they don't necessarily have to kill. <laughs> right? They don't kill things. That doesn't, it's, a, it's a personality disorder. Oh, shit. I felt like a vegetable. I felt like they were the Grim Reaper. What the fuck? It started to make sense. But now it's so watered down that the narcissists themselves will accuse you first before you even realize what you're dealing with. They'll throw that shit on you right away. It's a form of gaslighting, right? They'll throw that shit at you right away so you're like, oh, whoa. Oh, man. They think they're calling me a narcissist. Oh, fuck, what is this? And you, oh my God. And then yet you're reading this shit and it doesn't resonate. Like, that's not me. So what starts to happen, the reticular activa activation system, right? You, 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 confirmation bias. Well, they said this is what I am and this is my partner and I, I trust my partner. Not realizing you're trauma bonded already and you're you know, dependent on your abuser. Well, if they said that I'm that, I, it must be right. So you start looking for evidence and validation in your research and you're like well just ah yeah yeah I do that and you keep reading like yeah that's me fuck it's kind of like the the horoscope I call it the horoscope you start reading your daily horoscope and you, you your brain tends to filter out all the shit that's irrelevant and it zero in zeros in and lock, locks down on all the things that say yeah that's me 
That's my zodiac sign. Yeah, I do that. Yeah, yeah. You zeroes in on all that, but it filters out all the generic bullshit that could apply to anybody. So it's like a confirmation bias. So be very careful when you're dating someone and they start throwing those terms at you and they start calling you a narcissist and they start calling you psycho and they start saying all this shit. Um, you may just be a victim of gaslighting at that moment. They may be the covert narcissist that's trying to throw that at you to deflect, to confuse you. If they accuse you of that and now you turn around and accuse them back, you look like an idiot which was starting to happen. Narcissists accusing narcissists back and forth. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit anymore. If you're in a relationship with someone and, and you can identify abuse, it's not about putting the label and, and having a debate with them of whether they are a narcissist or a sociopath or whatever. You don't gotta convince your abuser that they're an abuser. You gotta convince yourself so you can get the fuck out. That's what you gotta do. So I wanted to read a, a comment that came in that illustri uh, illustrates this. It's from uh, Richard Harlow's, or Har Harlow, probably butchered your last name, sorry. But here we go. So he goes, the most challenging engagement I've had with a narcissist girlfriend was when she began accusing me of being a narcissist. I knew in my heart and head this was about as far from the truth as it could be, but I started reading and watching videos about narcissism. And that's the way I discovered that she was the narcissist and projecting onto me that which was true of her. Foolishly, because at the time I, honest, I honestly didn't understand very much, I began trying to have conversations with her about what I was learning and about how much of it is typical of how she thinks and how she feels and how she talks. This, as many of you already know, didn't end well. I'll, I'll pause right there for a moment. Yeah, um, I've said this before. You can't have conversations with your abuser about your plans, about the fact that they're abusers. I just said that a minute ago. You can't get into, into that type of discussion. Once It's like if you realize that, let's say, for example, you, you're watching the news and you, and you see like a, a mugshot and the cops are like, highly dangerous, most wanted, and they list all their crimes on the run. If you have any information on this guy or this girl, call your local authorities, and you're seeing that on TV and you're like, oh my God, and, and that's, that's, that happens to be your girlfriend or your boyfriend. <laughs> do, you do not want them to know that you saw that. You gotta play it cool, like you have like you have no idea what's going on make them a sandwich right give them a massage like just do not do not reveal your hand okay do not act weird do not do anything that might tip them off that you're aware okay and that's the, that's the thing here once once you understand oh shit I'm dealing with a psychopath. I'm dealing with a narcissist. You're not going to have an open table discussion with them and tell them, hey, you know what I realized, blah, 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 and this and the other, but you're calling me this, but I did the research. It tr turns out that that's exactly what you are and what you're doing is a common trait. <laughs> that's not going to end well. That's not going to end well, but um, let's get back into the comment. So Richard says, uh, each time I tried to address a specific behavior, it was turned back upon me. That what I'm saying proves her point that I'm the narcissist. And if I asked her for a specific example because that's what I'd given her, she'd tell me that she can't think of one off the top of my head, but then to proceed to indict me by offering a hypothetical scenario. Oh, how clever. One that clearly served as an example of what she was accusing me of, except that I was nowhere in that hypothetical scenario. I hadn't done what her hypothetical person had done, nor had I said what they said, etc. I'm only now seeing clearly enough that this is not a discussion that can occur with her. There won't be any mutual understanding or any meeting of the minds. She has mastered, at least to her own satisfaction, the art of psychological projection. 
of accusing everyone else of the things that she herself is doing. And there's zero willingness on her part to recognize that this is what she's doing. Everyone else in her circle is a narcissist. Everyone else, but not her. Honestly, it's like watching a bad sitcom, sitcom play out on TV. Except this was a relationship that I was in. And that until recently, I felt committed enough to, to keep trying to find common ground from which we could arrive at some measure of mutual understanding. It's like trying to have a rational conversation with an irrational person. Let me know how that works out for you. Doesn't happen. Long story short, I know, too late now, right? I know in my heart and head that there cannot be a relationship, at least not a mutually healthy one, as long as narcissism is a factor and I'm heartbroken over it. One day at a time, right? That's right. Starting over at 60 years old seems unlikely outcome, but at least I can begin the healing process and move towards some sort of baseline normal healthy. Well said, Richard. I appreciate that. And uh, starting over is not the way I like to, to, um, to call the healing journey. It's not starting over. It's starting where you're at and where you want to go and creating the path for the life you want to live and where you want to go. You have to start where you're at. You're not starting over. You're not going back to when you were 20 or 30 years old or whenever you first met your narcissist abuser. You're starting now and you're moving forward because time doesn't stop. Time keeps moving forward. So this is not a video game that you're going to hit the reset button and you're going to start over. You're not. If that was the case, it would be great. I would have hit that shit a long time ago and I'd be 20 years old again. How awesome would that be? Mm -mm. But then I would lose all my wisdom and all my experiences. Not good, right? Not good. You keep going from where you're at, all right? Um, but you see how clever the narcissist or how clever they're becoming because of all this information that's online. Um, and it's like a preemptive strike. So if you accuse them first, then everybody will jump on that. And then if they say, no, no, but wait, you're the narcissist, right? Now, once you do that shit, it's like, oh, no, too late, too late, no, too late. You can't, throw the, you can't throw the same insult back. You can't throw the same insult back. They know exactly what they're doing. How do you deflect that? Don't give a shit. I got people to call me all sorts of shit. I don't care what people think. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know, there was a time I did. There was a time I did, a lot. You know, there's this saying that when you're 18 years old, all you care about is what people think, you know. Um, once you hit, once you hit like 30 or 40, you stop thinking, you, you stop caring about what people think. And then once you're in your 60s, you realize nobody was even looking at you. Nobody was even paying attention. So it's like imagine having that, that wisdom at 18 and realizing, hey, it doesn't matter what people think. I don't care what people think. And chances are they're not even thinking about me. People can say, can think whatever they want to think, and then they'll get distracted with whatever it is that they're doing with their life, with their problems. Everybody has some shit going on. Everyone has something. You're going through narcissistic abuse, someone's going through domestic abuse, someone lost a child, someone had a miscarriage, someone is about to lose their home, someone, you know, lost their leg, they got hit by a bus, you know, there's a meteor coming and it's coming straight at their house only, you know, there's so much shit that's going on. Everyone has something, everyone has a challenge to overcome, even those that you think are super privileged and have all the money and have this and that. You, a lot of these people are suicidal and they're in and out of rehab and they have addictions, everyone has some shit. Okay? So it doesn't, doesn't matter what people are thinking or, or accusing you of. Um, you did the right thing in doing the research. And that's, and the way I see it, that's the silver lining. The silver lining was that your narcissist abuser was foolish enough to project what she was onto you, which led you to doing the research, learning about it, realizing 
it was her that was this label all along and you had to get out. Isn't that interesting how that worked out? She told you what she was by projecting it onto you. And it's like, whoa, it, it, it got your head spinning for a while, but then you realize, oh, wait a second. None of this shit that I'm reading actually resonates with me, but sure sounds a lot like what you are. And you know what? None of us are psychologists or doctors, so it doesn't even matter. We're just throwing labels around, right? What matters is, hey, I'm being abused and I need to get the fuck out of this toxic relationship. Well, I still have life in me. That's what matters. Ultimately, that's what matters. We use the labels to, to be able to identify the abuse and to identify the situation and be able to put a name on it. Because back in the day when this shit has always been going on, but there wasn't a label. So people didn't really understand. They just thought, oh, I guess that's just the way marriage is. I guess that's just that's my husband's personality. He's just like that. We didn't have one trillion <laughs> psycho, uh, psychological labels on every freaking disorder under the planet that we have now that it gets so complicated and so ridiculous. I, I really, I love psychology, but I can't stand that about. That's the part of psychology I can't stand. There, there's so many complex diagnoses and disorders where it's like, look, you check off this box, you check off this box, you check off this box, that's enough for me. You're, you're gaslighting me, you're cheating on me, you're triangulating me with someone else, you bring someone else into, putting someone else in between me and you in the relationship, you're making me jealous, making me wonder, you're seeing that person, be, that's it. I'm gonna fuck, fuck out of here. Fuck out of here. We can go down the list like I did with my, my psychopath, I actually had like 18 fucking check boxes to the T. Textbook. Textbook. Now I don't need to do that shit. I don't need to do that shit to, to cut someone out cut someone off from my life you know and sometimes the, the check marks are so clear you can clearly see by the way they speak by the way they act their behaviors you can see all sorts of shit you can see addiction you can see obsessive compulsion you can see narcissism you can see so sociopathy sometimes you can see all sorts of crazy fucking things that we could easily put a label on and maybe we're right maybe we're wrong Maybe we were half right. Maybe we were on to something. But when you see, when you identify someone like that, go the other way. Go the other way. You know, it's like I heard someone tell someone, someone once, you know, if you see this person coming your way, it, it's your duty to turn around and walk on the other side of the street. Do not come near them. That's how it is. When you realize you're dealing with someone like that, it's like, do yourself the favor, zip it, and go the other way. You're not going to have an argument with a psychopath and a narcissist and win. Even when you win, they think they won. Like They, they still think they won. And you're left drained. So if you're left drained, you, you were sucked, all your energy was sucked by the vampire. And the whole time you're telling them, you're a fucking vampire, you're a vampire. And they're, they're, they're sucking your energy as you're telling you, 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 you pale skin motherfucker, you fucking creature of the night, you and your fangs, you and your goddamn cape. And they drained you. And then at the end, they're, I, yeah, I, maybe I am a vampire, but look at you. Look at you, Mr. 1% Energy. You're about to die, and I'm going to go off and, 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 and fly. I'm going to turn into a bat and fly to, to, another, to another country now and just keep doing the same shit while, while you're there rotting away. What did you win? You didn't win anything. You, know, if you knew they were a vampire, and shit. I hope you're carrying a, you know, a nice wooden stake, some garlic. If you believe, believe in those things. Right? Crucifix, maybe? Um, yeah, so sorry to hear that, that it took that for you to discover what was going on, but at the same time, that just might be the silver lining. That's how it worked out in your favor. So good for you. Good for you. Thanks for sending that in. Guys, continue sending in your, your stories. I think it's very helpful 
for victims of narcissistic abuse to be able to read things like this and understand that it's not only happening to you, it's a common thing, and more, more importantly, what you did to get out of it. What you did to get out of it so that people get a little bit of hope, okay? Hope is very important. Sometimes hope is what carries you to the, to the next day, and sometimes that's all you need because the next day may be the best day of your life, all right? So thanks for watching, guys. My name is Kira. This is Psychopath Exposure. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.